one of the first things you notice as you try to get the mind quiet is how unquiet it is. Or as John Lee once said, that a lot of the practice is getting to know your defilements. All these thoughts that come into the mind and pull you away from the practice, there are lots of them. And getting to know them doesn't mean just seeing them, which you see all the time, but also recognize them as defilements. Because sometimes there are thoughts that come into the mind that seem to be perfectly reasonable, perfectly authoritative, telling you things as they are. And say, no, oh, this must be Dharma. But as you get to know them, you begin to realize they're actually getting the way of the Dharma. The Buddha once gave some instructions to Gotami, his stepmother, Mahabhachapati Gotami. She asked for some brief Dharma instructions that she could take off and use to meditate on her own. And he gave her some standards for judging what's Dharma and what's not Dharma. And this applies not only to teachings that you picked up from other people, other sources, it also applies to thoughts coming through the mind. In other words, when a thought comes to the mind and it actually helps towards dispassion, okay, then that's dharma. If it helps to making you unburdensome, if it helps to unfetter you from things you've been tied down to, that's dharma. It helps encourage you to put forth energy in the practice, that's dharma. But one kind of thought we come to think of as dharma is actually deflates us, robs you of your energy. And those are all the negative judgments that come in and say, what kind of person are you? What kind of meditator are you? Who do you think you are trying to meditate? Those are not thoughts that encourage you to practice. Those are thoughts that discourage you from practicing. They're not dharma. Recognize them as such. Then nobody you have to believe. Many times you find your laziness hiding out in those thoughts. Because the practice does take effort, and part of you doesn't like putting forth the effort. And so it tells you, you can't do it. You're not up to it. You don't have it in you. And it sounds true, and it sounds genuine. But it's not Dharma. You want to listen to the voices that encourage you to stick with the practice. They encourage you, yes, you can do it. This is one of the reasons why the Buddha has recollection of the Sangha as one of his ten basic recollections. Go reading through the Terigata and the Teragata verses of the elder monks and the elder nuns. And a lot of them concerned people who were just ready to give up. One monk complains he'd been meditating for how many years? Twenty plus years as a monk, and he hadn't had a moment of silence, a moment of quiet, he says. He was ready to commit suicide. And in his desperation, he did finally catch on to watching his mind and realizing that all these thoughts that had been telling him this and telling him that, they weren't dharma. The thoughts that were driving him to destroy himself, those aren't dharma. Thoughts that get him to give up, those are not dharma. They're defilements. And so matter, no matter how authoritative they may sound, you don't have to listen to them. Because the Dharma is all a matter of encouragement. As the Buddha once said, if getting the mind to be skillful was something human beings couldn't do, he wouldn't teach it. 
But it's something we can do as human beings. You can look at your actions. No matter how many times you've made a particular mistake, you can unlearn that mistake. Once you see that it's not necessary and it's causing suffering, you'll drop it naturally. Somehow part of us inside believes that it's necessary to act in a particular way, to think in a particular way. But as soon as you realize you don't have to do it and it's causing you suffering, why do you do it? Once you make that connection, then you drop it. Or as John Sawat said, it's like darkness. Darkness has no right to say, well, I've been here many millions of years and who does this little candle think it is that's going to drive me away? As soon as you light the candle, it drives the darkness away. You turn on a spotlight, it drives more darkness away. So the thought that well, you're this kind of person, you're that kind of person, remember the Buddhist teachings are not self. Your sense of who you are is based on a whole pattern of actions, pattern of habits. Habits can change. Actions can change. You can decide not to repeat something you've done in the past. And it may not be easy to begin with, but this is part of being a human being, as you have the ability to see your mistakes and learn from them. You have that freedom in the present moment. And all these old thoughts and all these old patterns are ways of denying yourself that freedom. Part of you is scared of the freedom to change. But you have to listen to that fear. Is it Dharma? Does it help make you unburdened? Does it help unfetter you? Does it help give rise to energy in the practice? If that's not the case, then you don't have to listen to it. This is why the Buddha gave that teaching to his stepmother, so she could sort out her thoughts figure out which ones to listen to, which ones you didn't have to listen to. All the old narratives of your life, that you're this kind of person, you're that kind of person, well, it's simply observing the habits, the way you've been doing things up to now. But you can change. You don't have to listen to those things. You don't have to carry those narratives around. You don't have to continue the old narratives. Sometimes we think, well, we have to wait until there's closure. You don't have to close. Just leave it, let it frazzle out. Because that's the way most people's lives are anyhow. People work and work and work on a project, and then they get too old to work on it, and then they, their faculties go, and then the end of life is not a closure. The people you would like to say goodbye to, you rarely get to say goodbye to. The old issues that you'd like to get settled, they don't get settled. Things just kind of stop. And so there's no reason that we have to get closure on our old narratives. Let them just stop, because they weren't good narratives anyhow. Or as the Buddha said, we go around with our cravings as our companions. Well, these aren't old companionships that you'd like to get a nice closure on. You can just stop them. The way to do it is focus on the present moment. You notice in the Buddha's teachings there are no grand narratives about how the world came into being and where the world's going to go. The Buddha taught more how to get to know the present moment, how to recognize what's good in the present moment, what's skillful and what's not skillful, and make your choices. Because it's these little movements of the mind in the present moment. Those are the creative forces of the world. And you've got tendencies, you've got habits that come in from the past. But with each moment, you have the choice to say yes or no. To move with the old habit or not. To carry on the old narrative or just to stop it.
And at first glance, it doesn't seem like the present moment has much power, especially if it's a, been a habit that you've been holding to for a long, long time. And just saying, saying no once, you, part of you says, well, just saying no once is not going to really have any power, because in a few minutes you're going to go back to the old habit. Well, again, is that voice dharma? Is that helpful? Is it a voice you want to listen to? In another minute you can say, no again, and then you can say, no again. And the issue may keep on coming up, but don't get discouraged. It's, you've got that power of past habits. But all that's required is that for each moment you say no to a bad habit. And don't get discouraged because the bad habit seems to have a lot of power. There's, there's old karmic stuff coming in from the past, but all you have to worry about is each moment right now. That's what you're responsible for. So learn not to weigh yourself down. This is why when you deal with pain, you're told, don't think about how long the pain has been in the past or how long it's going to be in the future. It weighs the present moment down unnecessarily. Places restrictions on how much freedom you have in the present moment. And the same applies to all your other old habits. No matter how long you've been a lazy person, you don't have to keep on being a lazy person. Don't even think of who you are. Just think, okay, here's this choice in the present moment. You want to do a lazy action or you do, want to, you do an energetic action? Do you want to do something that's working toward the Dharma or away from it? And make this present moment count. And then the next present moment will come along. We'll make that one count, too. And so all you have to watch out for is the present moment. The past will take care of itself, and if you're looking after the present moment, the future will take care of itself, too. This is all you're responsible for. And when you realize this, you realize this is also a responsibility you can handle. It's just this breath, just this moment. Take care of that much and you've got everything covered. <laughs>